My name is B.D. Douch and I have Earth Trine Farm and we've got about 10 acres in Ojai and five acres in Carpinteria that we're farming on. It's all certified organic by CCOF and we grow about a hundred different herbs, vegetables, flowers, fruits and we sell mostly at the farmers market and also we sell to caterers, schools, restaurants and produce stand only one store. We try not to do any shipping. I mean, we try to keep it all local. So it's all staying in the community. What, what's kind of your specialty? Is that one store Whole Foods? Whole Foods? Yeah, they buy our herbs. So I, I suppose our specialties are the herbs and our varieties of lettuces. And we grow broccoli for the side shoots, so like broccolini. Those are some of our most popular things. And then a lot of our obscure things like per, uh, Pakistani mulberries, our figs, our Valencia oranges, which we leave on the trees to ripen slowly instead of picking them all at once. So they develop more and more flavor. And so those are the things we're most known for. Earth trine is an astrological term. It means harmony of the earth elements. And when I started the farm in 1986, I'm a Virgo, my son, my firstborn son is a Taurus and my wife is a Capricorn. So we are the, the three earth signs. So we form a grand earth triune or earth trine. So if you understand astrology, there is absolutely no other name that you could possibly choose for the farm other than earth trine farm. So unfortunately, only like one thousandth of one percent of the people in the world know what it means. So I constantly have to give that explanation. So it really brings out the best in everybody. And the energy level gets picked up and it becomes a celebration of life and as well as a culinary celebration. So there's so many dimensions to it, way beyond simply feeding people. Well, we certainly have a symbiotic relationship with the community and the people that come to the market, most of them, every so often you get somebody who just wants their stuff and wants to go, but in general, people are so happy that we're dedicating our lives to providing them with food and recipes and health tips and jokes, and they get to see you and your family and get to know you completely. You know, I've always taken all my kids to the market. My wife comes sometimes and, and uh, they've known us for the whole time. And so we know them when their kids are around, they bring them to the market. We're, it's just one big family. It's like a family reunion every Tuesday afternoon, Saturday morning, Sunday morning. All this fun stuff. Well, What's your name? my name's Jonathan. How long have you worked here? I've worked here for about six years. How did you get started? We had a friend of the family who used to work for BD, and when she quit, I got to take her spot. That's great. What do we have here? Well, we specialize in herbs, so even during the winter, we've got about 20, 25 different types of herbs. And some of the more interesting here is uh, the Rosemary flowers, I'd like you to try one of those. They're real sweet, fragrant, and taste like rosemary. Um, this is an interesting one, Tatsoi. It's a Chinese sort of spinach. I think it's related to mustard, but it's an unusual salad green. Oh, this is fenugreek. 
It smells like maple syrup. Have you tried that before? No. It's especially good for nursing mothers, boosts milk production. And they say if you eat this stuff, your skin will smell like maple syrup. So we're lucky enough to live in a place where we can grow a lot of vegetables year round, even in the winter, and not to be too hard on people who don't have access to this sort of thing. So of course, you know, I think a lot more people would eat local if it was possible. It is important to the community, not just because of, as a food source, but as a meeting point for the community members to see each other and build relationships. So that's half of it, you know, half, half of it does come around the food, but it's nice to get to know each other. Do you feel like you've met a lot of people and kind oh, of yeah. built your... Oh yeah, that's how it is. I walk around town and hey, 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 it's all from the market. Well, because we have this hundred varieties of things and all the oddball things and, and are willing to plant herbs or vegetables that they're interested in, we have a really good relationship with the restaurants. The, the Tuesday afternoon and Saturday morning markets are both downtown within walking distance of, I don't know, a hundred restaurants. And many of them come to the market rather than buying food from distributors who do the best they can and sometimes are able to bring in things that the farmers can't grow. But this is the era of California cuisine, which is buying what's local and in season. And so they're part of this whole renaissance of eating that, that uh, involves purchasing your produce from the locals. And rather than trying to have a fixed menu, you work with what's happening at that season. So the restaurants now, many, many restaurants come to the market. And, you know, it's great for us because we have so many different things that they come maybe needing one thing or five things and end up getting a whole cart full. And they bring wagons and dollies and carts and... Uh, let's see, I, I, I knew the farmer's market before I knew BD. Um, and uh, one of my cooks, it was before I had this restaurant, I was working in another restaurant, one of my cooks came in and said, hey, there's a farmer's market and they have all kinds of fun stuff there. Uh, on a Saturday morning. So um, I went over there and lo and behold, they did have all kinds of fun stuff because what we see at the market today is, is a thousand fold greater than what we would find available 30 years ago. And um, uh, so that got me going to the farmer's market. And as I say, we opened this restaurant in uh, 1982. And in about 1983, um, B.D. came through the back door and he'd been living out in Isla Vista um, and farming on a very small scale, as I understand it, just for his own consumption and he had a little extra and um, so I was able to buy his little extra and that's how we started and um, I know that he's gone on and expanded his farm hugely and we're still here and we're still buying from, from BD and a few other farmers too, but um, he's one of my principal suppliers. Dedicated, he's, he's, um, he makes you want to cry he, he, with, with how dedicated he is to producing the very best vegetables, herbs, whatever that he can. And um, I was always struck by, he said something, we, we actually did a couple of dinners here with him. Um, you've heard of dinners with a winemaker. We, we started doing dinners with the farmer, which we thought was kind of a fun thing. And, um, you know, when, when you have BD here as the guest farmer, uh, people are just enraptured by his depth of knowledge and his, uh, you know, his, his care, his soul is in, is in the, what he grows. And he once said to us that, um, it's not what I take home from the market that counts, it's what I bring to the market. And I don't know if you've heard that from him as well, but I just think that that really sums up his, his philosophy as far as I'm concerned. And, um, you know, it gives me something to think about too, you know, I mean, I, I like to, I like to put on, on my plates 
something which is, is equally as special as, as, as he is bringing to the market. So. Well, I'm glad that there's a, a big interest from the younger generation. So, um, where your, what your name is and where you're from? Hi, I'm Sarah Gosselin. I'm from Goleta, California. And why do you come to the market? I come to the market to support the local farmers and to know where I'm getting my food from. I, I love to know that my fruits and veggies are locally grown well, and organic. How often do you come? I try to come every week. I try to save up and come every week. Yeah. What kind of stuff do you get here? I get all of my lettuce. I'm a vegetarian, so I get all of my stuff for the week and try to make it last. But I get, I love the spinach, I love the lettuce stand there, yeah, the spring mix and all that good stuff. How do you think the farmer's market impacts the community? I think it's, I think very positively everyone comes together. I love like the feel and the energy and I think it's a great opportunity to shop locally and just get all the good stuff. I definitely feel safe because these guys, they, I don't, they not only do they sell their product, but they really know what they're talking about and I'm confident in what they tell me. So I definitely feel that um, I don't have to worry about weird stuff going into my food and it's great. Yeah. What's it like, like knowing the farmer, you know, getting to meet the farmer? I think it's really cool because you can tell how passionate they are about what they do and they just like, um, they're really into whatever they are selling, so I'm, I feel good eating it, knowing that these guys put passion and they love what they do. My name is Justin West and I'm from Restaurant Julianne. And how often do you pick up from Earth Brine Farms? Uh, I pick up from Earth Brine Farms every Tuesday and Saturday. And what do you do if you need something special from them? From time to time, if I miss purchase on Tuesdays and Saturdays, I have been known to get a hold of BD directly and either drive over to Ohio or meet him in Carpinteria, depending. Why do you like to buy organic? Uh, we buy organic at Julianne because it tastes better and because we appreciate the relationship that has been developed farmer to restaurant. How has the farmer's market um, affected the community, the Santa Barbara community and the restaurants here? Um, you know, I don't think I've lived in Santa Barbara long enough to answer that question. Um, I've only lived here for five years and I think that the local food movement was well underway when I moved here, um, but we are happy to be a part of it. How do you feel about that whole movement? Your general comments on it. The local, how do I feel about the local food movement? Um, I feel like it's super important and I feel like we're really lucky to live here in Santa Barbara where we're kind of on the forefront for the country, I feel like. Uh, we definitely have access to some of the nicest produce around. I don't know what I, I don't know how I'd run my restaurant without all these farms, that's for sure. This is where the magic starts. To keep this style of farming going. There's some people in their 20s in Ojai that are saving local seeds. There are people that are planting new gardens all over the place in small farms. The next generation, and they're really dedicated. They're into organic. Organic is growing. It's really getting to be a bio-favorable farming world that we're looking at. People are looking for organic and there's the growth and evolution into a more pure way of, of eating and living. It's, I'm glad to have been a part of it and I'm glad that people are carrying it on. Uh, it's important. Anytime you can contribute to the purity and to people seeking a more pure way of living in an otherwise toxic world, um, it's all for the good. Yeah, we have uh, so much diversity of produce in California, for one. The Santa Barbara area has been fortunate enough to have uh, a slow growth state of mind so that there are a lot of farms right up to the urban fringe 
So at the farmer's market, you'll get people coming from just a few miles away to bring their produce. And that allows a high quality of freshness and because of all the microclimates that there are around here, people grow everything from mangoes to cherries. You know. So you can get a, things that you normally associate with the tropics, you could get things you normally associate with uh, the Pacific Northwest, all growing in close proximity. So that's really beneficial and makes the Santa Barbara market, which has a small town feel, but it's a, a big time market, uh, make, makes it one of the best in the world. Not just because I'm there. <laughs>